But right now, though, uh, we're going to talk to John Christie, uh, one of Britain's most notorious serial killers, lived in Notting Hill in West London and in the 40s and the 1950s. He killed eight people, stored them in his house, uh, his famous house, 10 Rillington Place, which has been the basis of a film and indeed a TV series. Uh, he... His uh, murders uh, shocked the nation. They absolutely shocked the nation. It's one of the horror stories of all time. Uh, there is one surviving witness to uh, the, these, to John Christie's reign of terror, uh, a man who actually knew John Christie and uh, whose uh, sister uh, perished in uh, this horrible phase, uh, and that is... Uh, Peter Thorley, who has written a book about his experiences. Uh, hello, Peter. Hello. Uh, can, I know this is uh, very painful for you, but of course, uh, tell us th what your book is about. It's about your sister, uh, her baby daughter, Geraldine, uh, and uh, uh, your sister, Beryl, and uh, her husband, Timothy Evans. Tell us what your book is about. Well, it is about that. Uh, it's just that I, as a, a schoolboy, my mother died when I was 12, and we lived just two turnings away from Wellington Place. And uh, after my mother died, um, Bill married Tim Evans. Uh, that was a blind date. Mm -hmm. um, introduced her from a friend that she worked with. Uh, and and they because she was expecting a baby afterwards, because they moved... With her, with his mother first, and and they all became pregnant. His mother said, "Well, I can't have children. The house, the house isn't big enough. So you'll have to find a place." Now, Tim Evans' sister Eileen was sitting on the train, and as she went past Wellington Place from Lovett Grove, she spotted the notice in the window, uh, flat to let. So she told uh, Tim and. And they went round and um, had a look at the place and, and accepted it, and they moved in in the Easter. Um, now, uh, as I say, I know this is painful for you, but Christy uh, admitted killing Beryl, your sister, but no. not uh, her baby, Geraldine. No. Uh, it's now generally accepted, uh, or a lot of people say, that Christy murdered both Beryl and Geraldine. Timothy Evans, your brother-in-law... Uh, w was uh, hanged uh, for uh, for the murders, uh, but he was subsequently uh, pardoned. So it is uh, the the official legal system says that uh, John Christie killed both your sister uh, and her baby, uh, mm. but you're not convinced that's true. No, I'm not. Tell um, tell us why. Well, you see, I knew John Christie well. Uh, I used to call him Uncle Reg and his wife, Auntie Ethel. Because he was known to his friends as Reg Christie, wasn't he? Yeah. He was known, although his name is John Reg. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Well, what, was, what was he like, uh, 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 Peter, as a man? He was a very nice man. Really? <laughs> yeah, he was. So I used to go in uh, every day when I came past, because I had to walk past Wellington Place to go to school, mm -hmm. and I used to pop in every, nearly every day. And he used to sit there and he'd give me a cup of tea and a sticky bun or biscuits. We used to sit and play cards. He liked children. And he he really liked my sister Beryl and, and the baby. Because when, when the film opened up, if people can remember it, yeah. there were so many mistakes in the first scene. You see, Beryl moved in in the Easter, mm -hmm. 48. The baby wasn't born till October. Yeah. And, and they used to look after Geraldine. Mm -hmm. And um, Evans was such a bad-tempered man. Uh, was I, he, was a, he was a drinker as well, wasn't he? A much a drinker, yes. I mean, when Beryl first brought him round to where we lived in Cambridge Gardens, I, I didn't like him on sight. And he... I don't know, I could just... My sister was a very private, quiet girl. And and I, I just couldn't understand how she ever went out with him. Mm. But do, do you, uh, so 
your feeling is, I mean, you know, obviously Reg, Uncle Reg, as you called him, John Christie, uh, you know, was a bad guy. Uh, he did terrible things. But you are convinced uh, that he didn't kill Beryl and he didn't kill her, her baby Geraldine. You think that was Timothy Evans? Yes, it was. Well, yeah. tell us why you have that conviction, Peter. Look, I used to be, I mean, in my day, we used to, children should be seen and not heard. That's what we were always yeah, I wish they'd bring that back, by the way. <laughs> no, yeah. Anyway, yeah. those days, you, and you never interfered with married people, you know. Yeah. And you never called people by their Christian names, adults. It was always Mr. and Mrs. or Uncle and Uncle. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I used to be up in the flat when I used to see Beryl with the baby. And but the baby used to be in the bedroom, and I used to go in and play with her, and I could hear Evans slapping my sister. Oh dear! And I used to put my hands over little Geraldine's ears and and pull faces at her to make her laugh, so that she couldn't hear what her father was doing. And and did did, did, did John Christie? He would have heard this as well. Oh, yes, he, he told me, he said, uh, one time he said, you want to watch him, he's a nasty man. Oh. And I said, yeah, I know that. He's, he's such a bad-tempered, always came in drunk. Drunk used to lot, used to uh, gamble. And that's why they didn't have the money for food, because he used to drink and gamble it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 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 so uh, you're convinced that despite the terrible things that John Christie did, that he had general, genuine affection for Beryl and Geraldine, yes, and he, as such, would never have killed them? No, no, he wouldn't have done. He wouldn't have done. But, but what did you think when you found out what he'd been doing? I mean, he killed his own wife, he killed all sorts of people, stashed them uh, in various parts of the house, used to wrap them up. What did you think when you found out that Uncle Reg had been doing these terrible things? Well, I, it was years later. Um, and, and I was in the army then. I was overseas in Egypt and Cyprus. I, you see, we never had newspapers then. I didn't get hold of newspapers then. Mm. And, and when I did actually find out about him, I just couldn't believe it was him. You know, he, he didn't come across... I mean, there was no bodies in the flat, in, in uh, Reg Chris's flat when I was there. Mm. I didn't... I used to go and play with the dog in the garden, Judy, the little dog... I didn't know there was two bodies in the garden. Yeah, you were playing with... Was that with... Is that Christie's dog you were playing with? Yeah, Judy, yes. Little Judy. So you were playing with Judy the dog, and underneath you, underneath the lawn, were two of his victims that he'd buried there. Yeah, they'd have been there for five years. Extraordinary. About 1943. I didn't know that. Extraordinary. Tell us about 10 Rillington Place. Uh, did you like it there? Did it have an atmosphere? I mean, you know, I'm trying to... Uh, picture it myself i mean it didn't even have electricity did it no none at all all gas uh so t what kind of a place was it was it run down was it scary no. what, what was it like no it was uh, their place was very clean um you know i used to sit in the kitchen although i used to sit in that rope chair which i didn't know that he was going to use later on <laughs> and uh there was a little square table in the in the window which he had a chair one side and, and uh, his wife, Ethel, had a mm. chair the other side. So I was just sitting in that little rope chair mm. and it was spotless. It was clean. You know, I couldn't fault the place. Um, and Mr. Kitchener that lived in the next floor up, mm. uh, he was almost blind. Um, uh, we never saw an awful lot of him, but his place there was clean and Beryl kept the, pla the flat clean, mm. you know. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your sister. Uh, what, what, what kind of a lady was she? She, well, was only, she was only 19, wasn't she, when she had the baby? Yeah. Yes. Um, she married Evans the day after her 18th birthday. Right. Yeah. Um, um, what, what, what kind of a girl was she? She was, um, she was a girl that you could trust. She used to... I don't know. She would never tell you any lie. She would 
you know, she would um, hug you and and really look after you. She was my oldest sister. I was the youngest. Mm -hmm. Basil, well, he was the next one down. He did what he wanted to do. And my sister, Pat, uh, she was down in Margate with my uncle and auntie that had a hotel down there. She used to go and look after their girl. Mm -hmm. So they were just sort of Beryl and me. Um, when Beryl married him, I was sorry that she moved out of the mm -hmm. uh, Cambridge Gardens because my father was a night worker. Uh, and when my mother died when I was 12, I had nobody. My grandmother uh, moved in for a while, um, but she wasn't a lot of help, but she was just there. Mm. Um and and all I had was Beryl. And um and Beryl used to look after me, you know. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, a very it's a very, very uh, sad story. Your book is called Inside Ten Rillington Place. Yeah. Uh and it's a great read, uh, because you are the last surviving witness of that yeah. terrible phase. Yeah. Uh let's go back to John Christie. I mean you said uh that uh, as a little kid to you, he always seemed like a really nice guy. Yes, he did. Yes, he he uh, he he couldn't talk very loud uh, because he used, he said he got gassed in the war. Mustard gas, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, my father had the same fun enough. He got gassed three times. My father mm -hmm. in, the, in the First World War, but he he never spoke very loud. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a smart man. You never saw him scruffy. Never saw him unshaven or anything like that. He spoke nicely, and, and I really liked him, and I treated him as my uncle. And uh, what did he sort of do? I mean, was he just uh, the landlord of Ten Rillington Place? I mean, how did he spend his days? Um, well, I was at school, you know. I mean, I know he used to have to go and see the doctor quite a lot because he had problems. Yeah. Back, and uh, he used to complain about his aches and pains mm -hmm. but other than that I never sort of, you didn't ask people in those days, how did you spend your day, you know Did, did you know his wife as well uh, uh, Peter? Auntie Ethel, yes I did. Auntie Ethel, yeah. yeah. And, he, and he went on to kill her Yeah, well I didn't know that <laughs> Well obviously yeah. um, I mean, When you keep getting this thing about two killers of Wellington Place mm. no there wasn't you know when when my sister and and her husband and moved in, um, nobody knew that there was any bodies in the garden. No. You know, she never started killing those we women until after Beryl had gone. I see. So uh, let's so the, the the chronology of it, the timing of it, uh, as far as you believe, is mm. that Evans killed your sister and her baby, yeah. uh, and only after that. Did Christie begin his uh, killing spree? Yeah, three years after. Really? That's yeah. fascinating, isn't it? And you see, when I got to learn about it, I'd, I'd been sent to New Zealand. I didn't want to go, but my father remarried, and the, and the woman down in Brighton that he married, which I didn't know he'd married, didn't want us around. So she talked my father into uh, putting me... Uh, sending me to New Zealand on this £10 scheme that the New Zealand government did. The only reason, you you had to stay there for two years. You couldn't come back. And I was on a farm out there, and I didn't learn all about this until the January. And so by, father, by then, had he been uh, was arrested, or was he in court, or anything like that by then? Oh, yes. Yes, his trial started. You see, and then my father wrote to the farmer that, and his wife that I lived with, that I worked, I worked on the farm, and, and told him to tell me uh, what had happened. And the very first words I can always remember come out of my mouth is, it was Evans, because I knew what a nasty man he was. Oh, and... Uh, so what did you what did you think, Peter, when Evans was pardoned? I mean, posthumously, obviously, because he was hanged uh, for uh, killing your sister. Uh, yeah. What did you think when he was pardoned? He must have been furious. Well, 
Can I correct something? Yeah. He was hanged for murder of the baby. Oh, yeah. sorry, I've got that wrong, sorry. Yes, uh, yes he was hanged for the murder of the you baby. But you still must have been furious when he was pardoned. Yeah, of course I was. So yeah. what, what we're talking about here, Peter, in your view, uh, is a continued uh, terrible miscarriage of justice, that we yeah. haven't got this story right. That's right. That's right. And um, oh, the I conviction just, was never quashed. The, the, the conviction was never quashed. But what, uh, for, uh, of, of, um, uh, of Evans? Of oh, Evans, that's right. Yeah. But he was pardoned, yeah. wasn't he? Quashed. It still stands it on record. It still stands on record. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, uh, Peter, thank you so much. I know this has been painful for you, but, it, you know, it's a fascinating... This is one of uh, the most compelling uh, cri- horror crime stories that this nation has ever known. Ten Rillington Place is written into legend, really, now. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, John Christie is one of the... Uh, serious horror figures uh, of British history and uh, you are the only living witness you've written a fantastic book called Inside Ten Rillington Place Uh, you've told us uh, an astonishing story of what it was like to know this man and your continued belief that there was a miscarriage of justice and I thank you for your time uh, and uh, I wish you uh, all the very best thank you so much yes okay Okay, bye bye. That's Peter Thorley there. Uh, He's written this book, Ten Rillington Place, uh, the only, the last living witness to John Christie, uh, that notorious serial killer. He actually knew him and he called him Uncle Reg and he thought he was a very nice man. It just goes to show, doesn't it? Appearances can be deceptive. Uh, I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. This is the home of free speech and common sense talk radio. Across the UK, online, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. Late Night with Christo Fufas on Talk Radio. Big topics, big opinions, big conversations, and a place to have your say. So phone Christo, and let's put the world to rights. Late Night with Christo Fufas. Weeknights from 10 on Talk Radio. Online, on DAB, and on the Talk Radio app. Talk Radio. Drive on Talk Radio with fabulous magazine from The Sun. Listen to Drive every weekday afternoon from 4 and get a daily hit of current affairs conversation, straight talking opinion and big name interviews. Plus, keep up to date with exclusive showbiz news and all the hottest celebrity gossip. Drive Monday afternoon from 4 on Talk Radio with fabulous magazine from The Sun. Pick up the paper every day for your dose of Fab Daily.